This video was recorded in front of a live virtual audience. Hello everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Today we are going to review together the Chanel Haute Couture Spring Summer 2021 fashion show. The video is taken directly from the Chanel website. Fair use is in gameplay modus because we will be reviewing that video. So, um, also I have a drink ready. So get your drinks out, sippy sippy time or popcorn or what have you. I'm gonna take a sip right now actually. Hmm. It's the wrong glass. Um, it's a dirty martini. This is not a glass for a dirty martini, but uh, it doesn't matter. There's a reason why it needs to be this glass, but I'm not going to go into detail about it, but just before somebody clocks me, I'm aware it's the wrong glass. Oh, this vodka is strong. It's a dirty martini with vodka. So uh, this video is shot in front of a virtual live audience. So I have my co-reviewers in the chat waiting. We're going to be reviewing together the show as it goes along. I'm dressed all weird and wonky and over the top because it is Haute Couture Fashion Week after all. So, you know, there's a little bit of Christian Lacroix from the 90s. It's a bit of vintage Chanel from the 80s. Uh, Dolce Gabbana from a couple of years ago. Vivian Westwood harness. Vegan harness, mind you. And we have a Chanel cuff. And because we are going to the fashion show virtually, we have our little bag with us because, you know, you need your bag when you're going, you know, you're going, you're going to sit in the front row, you're waiting, you're like, when is this show going to begin? Hold on a second. Is the show only women? Hmm... Are boys not allowed to watch the show? Or are boys there only to bring out the horse at the end of a show? Well, let's see. Let's see when we start watching the video. But before we get to the video, you're going to be all confused. Like, what horse? What, what are you talking about? We're going to get to it. Hold your horses. <laughs> so, um, yes, before we get to it, may I remind you to please, if you haven't already, consider subscribing to my channel here on YouTube or even further on, push the join button next to the subscription button and become a member today and get extra perks. You can also follow me on Patreon, become a patron today and support the Fashion Bunker. Thank you guys so much to all of y'all's patrons and members who have pledged already. Thanks to you, the Fashion Bunker survives. Thank you guys so much. And thank you to all my subscribers and co-chatters that are in the chat section right here, right now. So you guys, let's get to it. Let's, uh, let me, let me get my guzzle going. Um, a little bit of dirty martini, very filthy. This is like filthy martini, but the vodka is strong though. Mm. Okay. Let's play the video. <clears throat> you guys, are you ready? Just for the record, just to let you know, I'm not using the sound from Chanel's video. It's all copywritten. This is going to have a different abstract sound. So don't judge the images by the sound, really, because that's this is not the sound that played during the fashion show. So I'm just doing now for a little bit of atmosphere, adding some sort of sound, but it's not the sound from the fashion show, just to be very clear. Okay, let's go. And I'll be pausing it as I see interest. Okay. Black and white. All right. Chicks be walking. Haute Couture Printemps Ete 2021. Yes, cheers, sweetie. I see eyewear. That's regular eyewear. That's not Haute Couture eyewear. So what's going down here? Is this an Haute Couture show? Oh, more eyewear. But not Haute Couture eyewear. Hmm. Okay. Okay, everything is in black and white. Why are we not seeing colors? That is also a question that shall remain unanswered for now. Okay, we got the actresses, Marion Cotillard and then all of them, the, all of them there. And then there's, at one point they're going to show Penelope Cruz. There she is, La Mamaracha. Okay, now we go. All right, so it's ladies, basically, I guess because of the lockdown, Vanessa Paradis, the lockdown. No, Nobody can view the show. We've seen the Metier Da collection with Kristen Stewart being the only one watching. Now we have a couple more people watching in Paris. Only ladies, no guys. I mentioned it before. And we have the models walking through all at once instead of one by one, which is usually the case um, in a fashion show. This feels like it's the ending of a fashion show rather than the beginning. And it's a selection of ladies. It looks like a little garden in summer. Could be a wedding. 
could be a reunion of witches because it's it's a coven of witches it's only women uh so i mean in, in the best of ways which is in the best of ways it almost feels has a little bit of that midsummer vibes like the movie i didn't like that movie though uh anyway they're passing by they have their little marked petals on the floor marked passage i'm not going into the clothes yet because we're gonna get to see them in detail in just a minute oh color hello color okay so the first one mm, loving this color very beautiful saturated mm. that's very chanel you guys those little flowers and all the elements and the embroidery that is 30s 40s chanel gorgeous okay this is dreadful let me tell you why oh, you can be only up to 10 to 12 years old you can pull that off already on her i know this is terrible to say but very unforgiving these very very tight shoulder straps without covering the shoulders a lot of ladies don't like to have that part uh oh okay hello that's a boote i'm loving it interesting that chanel finally also plays with more body friendly curvaceous models very very pro that but it's kind of weird to see. look at that body i'm loving it yes oh that gave me that gave me vibes okay this jacket is gorgeous coco would not condone showing the knee though not because she was prude she just thought knees were ugly this little bolero jacket is to die for not liking the stripes on the pants makes it too sporty this is an haute couture show you guys this is not dolce gabbana or d squared the shoes are very elegant the head pieces you know coco in a sense of coco but very midsummer and midsummer reminds us of that movie then again a vest you you have to cover the shoulder a lot of women are not going to want to wear that without you know shirt underneath well you could layer it i guess okay this is beautiful very 80s very short though with the tool in the in the back um this powder purple pink is interesting okay peplum not a fan of it the cut of this little jacket that little peplumy bit at the bottom what is like denim but it's not mm -mm. okay this is gorgeous this is very very late 30s chanel last collections inspired by the whole you know gitan movement uh and aesthetic loving that piece the skirt uh the top shirt i don't know doesn't seem like it's fitted perfectly this is it's a bit oversized which okay she's gonna sit down now i still like it very much it's very innocent it's very beautiful this one should be a bit longer the little uh skirt okay another little bolero type of jacket again that stripe on the side of the pants no gorgeous pants very marlene dietrich this is very marlene dietrich but minus the stripe on the side again a vest like a gilet uh not feeling it with the bare hands you guys can be difficult to pull off a uh, beautiful jack oh look at the green the jade oh my god an emerald emerald green with a bit of jade hmm. again that stripe on the pants no okay the belly button showing we've had that lagerfeld did it the pret-a-porter 2014 supermarket collection I'm not saying oh be ashamed of your belly but it's an haute couture piece really you, you this is haute couture it's not pret a -porter. you know give us a bit more elegance this is this one is beautiful this is very chanel and i know he, even here the arms are bare but it's a different concept if you're very youthful and young you can pull it off yeah this not liking what's going on with the nipples not cool like the buttons are also very close to them so it looks like you got four no that was a... also these like padded black things in the front here Child? no 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 no. okay this is weird i felt like pajama party going on the shirt is oversized not in a good way it doesn't flow in a good way the tool silk whatever skirt is gorgeous but that shirt is just a teeny bit too oversized oh she's feeling her own those buttons on the sides are necessary but okay she look at her go she's like yes it's me oh this is gorgeous okay this is beautiful this is giving me late 70s early 80s vibes very clever choice to put this gorgeous dress on this gorgeous model her skin complexion skin color perfection 
this is so gorgeous. The whole, the, 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 the flowers in the hair, just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, I like this one too, the floral sheer game. It's just maybe too sheer. I know I sound too conservative. I'm not, I really am not. It's just that uh, at this level, you gotta look at these. De this seems like it's not very well fitted around the bust area. It's a little bit too loose, but okay. This is gorgeous, except again, that belly button. It's just a big black hole poking there, but the color is beautiful and the tool flow, the flowing of it is a gorgeous. This Tiffany blue, not feeling it for Chanel. Different color, but beautiful cut. Yes, another gilet, another vest, arms bare again. I mean, it is haute couture spring summer, but not every lady has $200,000 to drop for this dress when she's 20 years old. You know what I mean? You need a certain age also to pull it off. Gorgeous, this powdery texture, flowy, flowy, very Chanel, very 30s Chanel, loving it. Oh. Mm. <laughs> I, I get it. it. It feels too heavy. It's too beaded. It's too heavy. Okay, here the, the skirt is too short, but I am such a sucker for these floral Chanel old school from the 30s and 20s floral embroidery and stitchings and attachments. It's just, I love it. The skirt is too short. Okay, now here I have an issue with this dress in particular. Um, the glasses are not haute couture. Or maybe they are, but I don't think they are. They're not handmade, so they're not haute couture. And the lady actually has a watch on. Um, what is this? Really? You're wearing a Chanel watch, the, the, the regular ceramic one, even if it's haute couture? No. The watch got to go. I find that quite vulgar, quite vulgar to put a to try to market the watch there. Okay, now the bride. It, so, wait, it's not a guy. Oh, my mistake. It's a girl. A girl took the horse in, not a guy. No, 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 it's a guy on the other side, though. What is going on here? It's a guy and a girl. Anyway, so the model, okay, now we got the... She get and marry. She walks around and all the girls... What, what are the girls supposed to be dreaming here? Are they supposed to be thinking, oh, I want to be her. I want to get married too. But it's only women sitting around. So married to who? Married to another woman? Is this a statement? Because at the beginning, the show is telling us... Now, I know Chanel shows usually end mostly and Haute Couture ends with a, a bridal gown and bridal dress. But these are women for women. These are just... The audience is only women. It's only women sitting there. Um, and celebrating this as the final look like independent women strong women with character with strength oh now we're fading to black and white again la mama racha stands up and virginie comes out also with a vest you see virginie is of a certain age virginie is not wearing the vest on naked skin no virginie put a shirt underneath it because she knows that's how it's done so I'm like, if you're wearing it for yourself, why don't you let your models also wear the, the actual shirt on? I mean, you know what I mean? But anyway, and now she retreats to this tent. Is it a wedding tent? Is it a circus tent? Well, the horse came out of it, but okay. So, and she's out the dough. All right. Okay. So thank you very much for that, Chanel. Now let me, a couple of things. So as I said, uh, this fashion show, uh, cheers guys, by the way. Only women sitting in the audience. Uh, women strutting the runway for women. Beautiful concept. Great. Okay. But then if you're independent and you have the strength to be yourself, why is your ultimate goal and the last clue piece of the collection a wedding dress? Unless you're not telling me you're going to get married to yourself or to another girl. But again, it, it was a bit dubious. Uh, the The other person who carried the horse out, I don't know if it was a guy or a girl. It seemed like there were two different people. They shot it maybe in two different times and they edited it together. It seems like um, they swapped people at one point uh, because there's definitely a woman there with the fall winter main collection boots, Chanel boots on that a guy could not wear because it didn't make such a big size for a guy like that. But so, and then at one point it looks like a guy is actually there instead of a woman holding the horse or guiding the horse. So I'm not so sure if they kind of swapped models there or people or trainers, horse trainer, what have you. But that aside, that was a technical issue that they needed to have to not get the horse nervous probably. So they had to have the trainer of the horse do it. But for the rest, 
So that was a technical issue, I guess. But for the rest, it was all women. So like if women are celebrating women, why is a wedding dress the last thing at the end? Which is literally kind of the epitome of the cliche of, oh, my dream is to get married to a rich prince and live life of happy. Uh, like, no. You want to be empowered? Be empowered. If you're going to be empowered, part of being empowered is also not dreaming about those fairy tale stories, which are kind of just built up to cater to your mind in order to manipulate you into believing that you need certain things because society and governments and taxes and blah, 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 all want you to go in there. Governments want you to make babies and want you to be locked in a marriage and want you to have a certain structure because new babies, new taxpayers, society keeps growing, economy keeps growing. It's not good for any society when natality rate is below zero, obviously. So... It's more in the interest of the government that you marry. In fact, that's why they also give you in many countries a lot of uh, tax cuts when you get married and have kids. So there's that. And I'm like, so Ch what is Chanel trying to say? They're keeping the heritage, the tradition of making a wedding dress at the end of the show, even though the show is really not about that. Unless the whole show is within this gathering of women in summer for somebody's wedding but there are no men there again it, it's very I'm, I'm not feeling comfortable with the whole i mean who cares if i feel comfortable or not some people might feel comfortable with it some not but i just feel like i'm not by comfortable i don't mean oh i'm offended i'm not offended i couldn't care less not comfortable in terms of accepting the concept you see what i mean what does it actually mean what did they want to tell us with this show because some people might be superficial and not care about digging deeper underneath the surface, but you know that ain't me. I like to to read between the lines. I like to understand and dissect something um, theoretically, practically, physically, emotionally, in all levels. So I watched the video that came after that, which is uh, basically a round table within that circus tent or whatever tent it is or wedding tent. With all the actresses and a couple of models, they all sat around in a circle talking about how amazing the show. You know, I mean, of course, they're not going to say anything bad, but they can't, you know. La Mamaracha, Penelope Cruz, she was like, you know, yeah, it was amazing. Uh, Vanessa Paradis, oh my God, it was amazing. Lily Rose Depp was Vanessa's, I guess, daughter and Johnny Depp's daughter. And she's like, oh, this is amazing. And I was so honored a couple of seasons ago to be able to also wear, to close the Chanel show. I wore the wedding dress at the end of the show or the the wedding look at the end of the show. And then her mom's like, you make me cry. When I saw you walking out, it was amazing. Vanessa, you know, Paradis also saying everything is amazing. So everybody says everything is amazing and great. All these women talking. But it's so funny. If you notice in that interview, the lady that's moderating the whole thing, I forget her name. She, her accent sounds Dutch. She might not be, but it sounds Dutch. But she also speaks French, obviously. And then she says, and it's so funny. Every time she starts saying something that I feel interested to hear, when she says, oh, yes, and you know, and Virginie uh, was inspired by so many elements from the past and the future. And I'm like, oh, really? Tell me what they are. Then she just stops there and says, so, Vanessa, tell me. Oh, no. And then she turns to the model. So how was it for you to walk in a beaded dress? I'm like, really? So you just, you just hinted at something that I'm really interested in, n knowing what the inspiration was behind these pieces and knowing what Virginie really was inspired by. You're like, yes, and Virginie was inspired by these uh, elements. What elements? If you're not going to tell me what elements, then shut up. Don't bring it up. Don't bring it to the table and say like, oh, by the, by the way, Virginie, you know, there's so many personalities from history that she was inspired by for this show. Anyway, so you model, how does it feel wearing a beaded dress? I'm like, Really? That is so lame. So that round table was a tragedy. It didn't go well, in my opinion, because it didn't bring anything more to the collection. It didn't reveal anything about the collection. It just was a self-celebratory moment of these women saying how amazing they are to each other and saying how amazing the collection was to each other and saying how amazing Virginie Viard was and how amazing Chanel is. But without stating any reasons as to why it is amazing and what is behind the actual choices that were made for the collection. So that was a missed opportunity. That was a very missed opportunity. And then the Kaziragi lady, uh, 
after that, another video clip was posted. This, uh, what's her name? Kaziragi something, uh, was interviewed about the books she likes to read. And I, here is another point. A, a woman reading books, amazing. Chanel loved books. So Chanel is pushing this whole, the brand Chanel is pushing this whole agenda about the woman that loves to read. I went to the fashion, um, the exhibition in Venice about, uh, that was 2016. Chanel, the woman who reads about the whole book collection that Coco Chanel had and stuff like that. Great, very interesting, but what are you trying to tell me now? Now you're having this woman that came to the show that when she talks sounds so snobby, so privileged. She, you know, with that f Parisian flair in a way by saying like, oh, yeah, oh, boy, yeah, read a book. Boy. You know that whole attitude and you're just like, oh, God, just shut up or get to the point. Um... You know, being detached, that coolness, that French kind of flair while talking about books, wearing a Chanel suit, not talking about the Chanel collection at all, but using this interview as marketing for the Chanel Haute Couture show. I'm like, what are you trying to tell me? You need to be a snobby intellectual to appreciate this collection. And you're also trying to tell me that in order to appreciate this collection, I have to snob it and not talk about it at all. I just wear it. And I love books and I have all the time in the world to read because I'm not working class. I don't have to work eight hours a day. I'm just, you know, I get it. It's an haute couture show. Just a handful of people can afford $100,000, $200,000 dress uh, in their wardrobes. Fine. But to promote the collection, you're interviewing somebody about the books that they like to read, decontextualizing uh, the collection and bringing it back to this dreamy state where you know a girl is closed in her room surrounded by her books living in a bubble dreaming away yeah that is a landscape that is poetic but it's a dangerous territory to go into because if you go in that territory you're bound to be interpreted in different ways who is superficial and we know 99% and this is to be euphemistically speaking about, 99% of people are super superficial, but whatever. If you're going to be superficial about it, you're just going to say, oh, beautiful dress. Oh my God, I want, to, I want to wear that wedding dress. I'm like, yeah, okay, but there's more to it. Ask yourself fundamental questions. Why is something made the way it is? What is it trying to tell you? And something that is so expensive also, there has to be a lot of thought that went into it and to making it. What is that thought? I want to know that thought. Knowing that thought is part of the process of enjoying that piece. To me, I don't care about Kaziragi. Who the F is she? Anyway, she's not designing for Chanel. Yeah, she's a friend of the house, so she wears it. Okay, fine. But I don't care what books she likes to read. I'm here to watch a Chanel show. Okay? I'm not here to get a list of books that Kaziragi likes to read. And I'm not here to get her opinion on... Some of her opinions are just also like, what the hell? But anyway... And how to define poetry, how she loves to read Rilke. I'm like, really? Can we go more cliche than that? You're talking with that voice of that sophisticated... You know, but then she's saying stuff that kids tell you when they're in high school, learning to read these things for the first time. I'm like, you're a grown-ass woman, and you're giving me comments like a kid would when they do their homework in high school on these books, on the subject of these books. Terrible. But... I know I'm very critical because I know these things. So for me, it, it's painful to watch certain things because they're just so out of place, so out of context, and so forcefully pressed in there to make everything look like it's more sophisticated than it actually is. And this is where we get to the point. Strip it down, Virginie. Make it more simple. Don't put all the over, over the top poetry around because it's forceful poetry around the collection, because it takes away from the actual collection itself. In fact, we wasted so much time blabbering on about the surrounding that we didn't actually talk about the pieces. But that's you, that's on you, marketing team and production team of Chanel, because you made everything so forceful around it that you didn't really give the opportunity to enjoy the pieces for what they are. You're forcing a narrative on top of them which is unnecessary. The pieces are beautiful. Some of them are very beautiful and they speak for themselves. They don't need this whole framework, forceful framework around it. And they sure as hell 
don't need Kaziragi to tell you what freaking book she's reading and why she's reading it and how she's analyzing it. You really don't. Chanel doesn't need that. It's beneath you. Anyway, back to the collection quickly. I enjoyed it. There were some moments that were quintessentially Coco Chanel. There were some moments that were hinting at an homage to Carl. And there were quite a few faux pas as well. The watches, dreadful bad taste to wear a watch in, with haute couture. The glasses, the sunglasses, yeah, no. If you're going to do it, do it like Karl Lagerfeld did it in 2007 for the haute couture show where the glasses were handmade with pearls and crystals. I mean, that was haute couture glasses. Don't put regular runway glasses in an haute couture show. Unless you're not going to tell me that they were handmade, that those double C's are hand-bent gold, 24 karat gold, and you know. But it's probably not going to be the case. But I will stand corrected if those glasses turn out to be haute couture pieces and not available for regular retail. Let's see. Let's see. Regular retail, I mean also boutique exclusives. Let's see. But other than that, some of the colors were majestic. Some of the embroidery was just super, superb, delicious. Uh, some of the lengths were perfection. Not a fan of the really cropped and cut really tiny shoulder bits that, you know, straps that, that show too much of the arm. Uh, because as I said before, who can afford these pieces usually is not that young. Um, some of the pieces were not well fit. This is another issue I had. Some of the pieces are just a little bit too oversized for those models. Or some of the models are just too thin. But all in all, I get the vibe, I get the mood. Have I seen better? Yes. Was this a success? All in all, when I just observe the clothes themselves, yes, I think it's a, it's a return to more Chanel tradition and heritage. There you have it. That's my opinion. Thank you guys so much for watching. Cheers, sweetie darling. Let me read your comments. Hmm. I love Haute Couture. Basically, Virginie Via at her finest, says MK. Um, uh, Jack says, I really dislike the soundtrack for the Chanel show. I don't know why. I just didn't, it just didn't fit. Yeah, not the one I, I used. You mean the actual one. Yeah, I hated it too. Yes, uh, Mr. Philip Fabulous says, yes, I hated it too. Good point, Jack and Mr. Philip Fabulous. Uh... That song, which we all know is so famous for Dirty Dancing, they re they covered it. It's a cover version. Again, it's a love story. Again, it's a man and a woman. And again, it's a story that is so burned into our minds. And now Virginie Via likes to reference these old things. Old things. It was from the 80s. Not that old, right? But anyway, um, Dirty Dancing. Um, what a great movie, by the way. Jennifer Grey, Patrick Swayze. Ah. Oh. We digress. Uh, again, women for women alone, you know, like empowering women. And then they're like, you're referencing a song from a, literally from a movie where this girl falls head over heels in love with this guy and would do anything for him. Yeah. The opening and the closing brought me to tears, says Mr. Philip Fabulous. Um, Jacqueline, I don't know if I'm drunk enough. Hold on. She is sweetie. Uh, it's a dubstep artist, says Lucas G. Uh, MK says, uh, no, no, the collection from a few years ago. You, mm, I don't know. Okay, but the Linda Ronstadt was so beautiful. With Marion Cotillard and Penelope sitting down looking at the models, says Fashionista in La Playa. All fact of stories, I got my blanket, I'm ready, lol, grandma style here. Um, MK says, I love haute couture, basically Virginie Via at her finest. I read that before, but I read it again now. David Santiago says, but the colors I did like, um... Fashionista in Apply says, I agree, Virginie at her finest, Mr. Philip Fabulous. It's a clear sign by Virginie. Women's club only. I guess we're not invited. Uh, David says, but Dior did only men. So, yeah, but that was a men's show. <laughs> because, mind you, Dior has collections for men, collections for women, and haute couture, right? Chanel has only women. Chanel doesn't do uh, a men fashion show, so it's a different situation. The Everlasting Dior Chanel. Oh, hi, fashion, says Robert. Yes, yes darling. <laughs> uh, hi, Jacob. Great to see you live. Hello, sign language boy. Hello, hello. Welcome to the, to the, to the chat. Robert says, hi, fashion, darling. Again, hi, fashion. 
so sign language boy says hi Jacob great to see you live no matter how shitty my week is I love seeing you and your fans and escape from this long lockdown nightmare thank you so much sign language boy thank you thank you and welcome with all my heart to the live chat and this review of the Chanel Haute Couture Spring Summer 2021 show Mr. Philip Fabulous, the everlasting Dior Chanel dispute, I suppose, David. That is true. Um, it's so absurd, says David. Uh, Mr. Philip Fabulous says, I loved the opening. Lucas says, did you see Control by Anto... I don't know, okay, that's something else. Jack, uh, I'm uncomfortable with how many people they had mixing. <laughs> I like how it starts in black and white, says Melly. Um, Jack says, Jacob, your soundtrack works better for it than Chanel's did. You're welcome, sweetie. Um, Mr. Philip Fabulous. And that low-key plus-size model that they didn't really show, she was like, look, we are inclusive. Actually, you're right about that. It was it was just one uh, model that was more body-friendly, really. And yeah, it was just one. And it was like, here, there, there's one for, you know, uh, good PR, good PR. That is true. Lol, Jack, yes. She size 40. Fact of story says. <laughs> the shade. Oh, you guys. Fashionista Apply says, I love that the models are chatting, like carelessly elegant. Mr. Philip Fabulous. And then little petal flowery clothes for spring. Groundbreaking. <laughs> I was greatly disappointed, says Mr. Philip Fabulous. Brandon says, I love it though. Rich Mitch says, cake. Brandon says, the yellow. Fashionista La Playa, yeah, we need more curves. I have curves, so haha, I am a bit biased. Oh, Fashionista La Playa. Yes, girl, we love our curves. Mm. Brandon says, yes. Brandon also says, love the green one. I still like the first model with the blouse, says Olfactive Stories. Jack Dean says, no more vests. I love a good vest, though, you guys. But it has to be a bit oversized, rightly tailored, without a peplum. Without a peplum. No more peplum for 2021, you guys. The curved model is Dutch and is size 42. French women, average size, says MK. And you know, Fact of Stories, I think, mentioned it prior. She thought it was a 40. But exactly. That's, that's the travesty of it all. It should be norm to have normal women walk the runway but unfortunately, and in fact, when she, because compared to the, oh, thank you. Thank you, Giamato Jr. for subscribing. Thank you so much. She, when she, oh, <laughs> no, ma'am. At that's the point. The com it's the combination, you guys, because a size 42 model, natural, beautiful, healthy body, beautiful, healthy body. When you let her alone as the only one with a healthy body, curvaceous, size 42, walk the runway together with the others, of course she's going to look huge because the others never eat. They never eat. They're a size zero. So, of course, compared to them, she's going to look, you know, clunky. Plus, they did give her the dress, that the thickest dress they had, the thickest kind of woven, what was it, a knit or a tweed. It was so stiff and big. So it, it made her look even bigger. Um, again, I still thought she looked flawless because she rocked it and she was deliciously curvaceous. But again, problem, the only one and all of the other ones never eat. So that contrast was very harsh. You know, it was sudden, abrupt, harsh. And as you guys pointed out, it was only one of them. Uh, Elsa says, beautiful. Mr. Philip Fabulous says, gotta say, this music is much more fitting for the show. <laughs> Thank you. Brendan says, the flower headbands remind me of Midsummer. Yeah, 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 the movie. Uh, Fact of Story says, um, MK, thanks. I heard she's 40. Still, she's a beauty, lol, of character for her face. Hmm. Brendan says, love that one. And Jack says, so many trouser stripes. Those trouser stripes got to go. That's to go. Uh, Brandon says, still st too stiff for me. Jack says, horrible. Debbie says, the pacing of this show is too fast. Exactly, Debbie. But then they posted extra videos about interviews about all, all of these women talking about how amazing they are to each other uh, without talking about the show. And I'm like, can I actually get to see the show? Can you slow it down a bit? 
Factor Story says, love that jacket. Fashionista says, I love the emerald jacket. I love the emerald jacket too. Uh, uh, the, the, the jade jacket, gorgeous, says Melly. Jack says, belly button showing is a little too hot topic tween for me. Oh, that's a good one, Jack. Hot topic tween. Brandon says, I wish this were on a stage. Well, it's the stage of the world, darling. Social media is the new stage. Social media is the new black, you guys. Lie to me 101. I'd love to see more diverse models. I agree with you. I would love that too. Jean-Paul Gaultier was a master at that. Diverse in every sense. Skinny, chubby, healthy size, unhealthy size, young, old, mid-age, everything, everything, everything. Jean-Paul Gaultier was amazing in that. Oh, the drink of it all. I'm getting hiccups now. That's great. Ah, uh, so, um, Luca says, I chatted a bit with this, um, black haired model earlier today on Insta, LOL. Oh, really? With that exact uh, model? Uh, what did she say about the show? Um, Melly says, I like how some of the models were smiling. So carefree, not so uptight. That, that was the norm in the nineties for all of the top models. They were all super chill and happy. Like then it all became super like retentive. And now it's kind of faked like, oh yeah, they're more chill and cool. <laughs> Look, easy vibes. But it's kind of, it still feels a bit plastic to me. Love that grayish one, says Brandon. I love the blue, says Melly. Jack says, I'm tired of the vests. Sorry. Fashionista in La Playa. Yeah, that belly button is a no-no. Brandon says, vests in every size and color. Fashionista in La Playa says, I see enough belly buttons in sunny California. Jack says, queen in pink is running around the room. Lied to me says, no, 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 no. Melly says, my fave still is 2019 haute couture. MK says, I do really love Virginie Via's take on haute couture, which is less conceptual. Everything looks so wearable and desirable. My dream now is to get an haute couture jacket one day. Fact of Story says, too much shoulder and belly button for me. Mr. Philip Fabulous, every single season Virginie bombards us with a weird unwearable piece. This gilet, those terrible tights, not to mention those knee pants. I mean, really? <laughs> Patrick says, I just feel like this collection is kind of lazy. Ooh. Melly says, I don't like the horse part. Uh-uh. Jack says, I think the guy came out behind the horse to help the lady down from the horse. Brandon says, love that wedding gown. Luca says, yeah, I think there's two people with the horse. You see, I also thought there were two people. They just took one out and then filmed with the other one later. Brandon says, so this is a wedding? Mr. Philip Hobbs says, wedding dress is nice. Jack says, are the women sitting around bridesmaids? Debbie says, this show is not cohesive to me. Brandon says, dreamy. Uh, Philip Fabulous. Oh, it's a wedding dress viewing. Like, say yes to the dress. Brandon says, could have been better. Lucas says, the show concept was wedding family reunion, apparently. Melly says, I'm a fan of Virginie, but this was very meh to me overall. MK says, hold on a second. Okay, no, sorry, skipping. Brandon says, it was lovely, yet needed more oomph. Uh, Mernie Standifier, hello, sweetie, welcome to the chat. You said everything I said. I need to be, view a show with you. Yes, queen. Jack says, Virginie's outfit is giving me Zara vibes. <gasps> the shade of it all. Oh. I drink to that, Jack. Lie to me 101 says, some of the pieces look very basic. I hate that pink ruffle dress. Just my opinion. Some pieces are also very beautiful. I liked the pink ruffle dress, but just because I know the simplicity that Coco Chanel's dresses had in color and tone in the 20s. It is quintessentially Chanel. You could say it's boring. For today's standards, it might be. But it's a direct link to a Chanel from the 20s and 30s. And that I really appreciate. Virginie has lost some weight, I think. She looks sublime, says MK. Lucas says, enjoying this family reunion together. Fact of Story says, the end was a bit weird. MK says, thanks, Deco, for this review. Fashionista and Apply says, I would have liked a couture show outdoors since it is spring, summer, uh, depicting a wedding with guests during this time. It is a bit silly. Caleb says, I did like the final bridal look. My favorite Chanel bride has been Devon Oki. Carl walked her out many times. Yeah, she has been really cool. Uh, Lucas says, I guess they didn't want to show that guy walking, just helping her go down. Yeah, they wanted to avoid the guy as much as they could. They wanted it all to be about women, but then he had to kind of slid in, slip into, because they didn't have the, the, the woman 
um, with the horse in that moment, so they had to keep him in for that bit, I guess. Jack says, Virginie has always been low-key. She is not the ostentatious type, but still very stylish. Jack says, um, would have been much more impactful if they focused it around a lesbian wedding. Totally! Get with the times! They're already super late with, like, oh, body consciousness. Like, already, like, literally years too late. And then, um, they're late. <laughs> On every, they're late. Brandon says, could have been worse. I agree with you. Abby says, so boring. Anya E says, hi everyone. What was reviewed? Chanel, Haute Couture, Spring Summer 2021. Brandon says, men will let you down. Money won't. Haha. -ha. Oh my God. Melly says, haha. -ha. <laughs> yeah, you guys. Um, Olfactive stories. It would have been nice to see two brides at the end. Yeah, it would have. Jack says, I really want to see a depressing gothic Chanel. Ooh, I would love that. I thought they were going in that direction with Fall Winter 2020, but then they didn't. They almost did, but then they didn't, you know. Missed opportunity. Uh, it is strange that there are no guys, says Melly. Fashion Sun Apply, I feel like everywhere is sunny. M Mr. Philip Fabulous, to me, this show is mediocre, some pieces of clothes, not haute couture at all, more like a generic ready to wear with some celebrities sitting in the front rows. Agreed. In many, many respects, you're right. Brendan says, imagine if McQueen was the designer for Chanel. Cha, we would have dreams happening. Robert says, meh. Brendan says, mediocre. Rich says, um, you know, when a brand tries to tell us something, do brands think, I wonder what the punters are trying to tell us? Ah, the shade is palpable. Melly says, Caroline, something, uh, fashionista in la playa. McQueen is so over the top, haha. <laughs> but he knew how to dose it, though. McQueen wasn't only always designing for McQueen. He was also designing for other brands. Um, Jack says, I can't see McQueen at Chanel. I think he could have done it. He would have restrained himself. Darla. Hey, Darla. Welcome to the chat. Yikes. Agree. Conceptually confused. Felt like a limp biscuit. Where's the spirit? The message for the moment? Why this? Why now? Very Lynchian questions, Darla. Fashionista applies says, oh my God, now I have to see the round table. Uh, Myrny Stan Standifier says, yeah, I agree. It felt superficial. My mom actually came in on a horse for her wedding, LOL says Brandon. Brandon, child, that, that's a spectacle. Oh my God, now I have to see... Yeah, right, I read that one. Uh, Mr. Philip Fabulous, by now, I hoped Virginie and Chanel would have sobered up from the loss of Carl. This seems to me like a case of when the cat is gone, uh, the mice run around. Oh, as the saying goes. Ooh, that is very sophisticated shade. A very sophisticated haute couture nuance of shade, darling. Very well delivered. Brandon says, the collection looked like for the real housewives. <laughs> oh. uh, Caroline says, spot on regarding uh, her not talking about the show, but about herself. Says Caroline. Mr. Philip, fabulous. Haute couture delivers a story. What does it say? What is the story behind it? What's the mood it puts me in? Haute Couture for me is not an everyday affair. It's fantasy. Amina says, The show seemed so rushed to me, fast-paced. I noticed that I need more time and information to comprehend what is happening and take it all in. Amina says, I appreciated your comments. Thank you so much, Amina. Luca says, Are uh, the literary videos really linked to the collection, though? It was announced before, from what I know. No, they were posted on Chanel's own YouTube channel after they posted the fashion show. All those ladies need to take the stick out of their beep. <laughs> Pardon my French. Um, uh, Mernie Stenfire says, I love watching the work that the women do in creating the pieces for the show. The passion and pride they have in their work is beautiful they work in a poetic flow i agree with you completely and that's what they should have shown and that's what they should have shown because that's exactly what i wanted to see as well brendan says loosen up chanel mr philip fabulous says oh if coco was alive and witnessed these literary literary circle ladies she would have laughed. lucas says haha brendan says seemed like she tried too hard to lighten up our times but it was too bland. That's a good point, too. Melly says, I have to admit, 
I miss Carl for Chanel. Mr. Phillips responds to Melly and says, preach, Melly. Brandon says, Coco would have um, had them walking on nails and glass, LOL. Lucas says um, to MK, yeah. Oh, no, sorry. That was a comment for MK. Directed directly from MK. Brandon says, um, David Lynch should direct the next Chanel show, LOL. That would be amazing. Um, I'm Louis says, I feel like Haute Couture at this point is just marketing to sell more perfumes. It's just a show. Yeah, but did they deliver a show, I'm Louis? Eh. Mr. Philip Fabulous says, David Lynch, Chanel, mind blown. It would be cool. He did some great commercials for Dior, for, D for the Dior lady bag. Uh, and he did some great commercials for Opium, Yves Saint Laurent. Uh, MK says, Jacob, the attitude you hate... It's typical Parisian attitude. During dinner en ville, one always has to show off the latest book we pretend to have read, carrying a Birkin while maintaining poor hygiene. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about, MK, and I cringe to that each and every time. I encounter it, and I encounter it a lot in my line of work in Paris. I would have loved to see a young man in that collection wearing a dress. Brandon says, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> MK says, well, just to pretend we can afford all those posh things and not to care at the same time. The nonchalant attitude. I agree. So hypocritical. And that is the fact. Uh, it is so hypocritical. They're like, so like, yeah, you know, yeah, it's a very nice dress. I really like it. What did you read yesterday, darling? I'm like, a bunch of women and a couple of men spent weeks making this by hand. Give them a bit more respect and time. And especially if you want to justify the fact that this thing is going to cost somebody over a hundred grand to buy. Uh, Fashionista and Apply says, I really enjoyed this review. Thanks. Thank you so much, Fashionista and Apply. I might as well have had Missy Elliott in the show and cut her out, says Brandon. Oh my God. Jack says, my dream, a gothic dark Chanel lesbian wedding with men as the bridesmaids wearing couture dresses. Oh, that sounds more like a Gautier show, but I love it. I love it. Caleb, I know what couture can be simple, etc., but I have a couple of Chanel jackets that to my eye look more extravagant than some of these. Example, Lesage metallic tweed with printed chiffon, silk, ribboning pulled throughout. Totally true. And mostly some of their Métier d'art collections are just all about showing that artistry that kind of becomes almost like haute couture, even though a lot of it is not completely handmade because you need to be handmade fully to be haute couture, uh, FYI. But uh, yeah, Br uh, Bartosz, hello, welcome to the chat. Deko, when you were reviewing Chanel number no. 5 Eau de Toilette, I imagined all the time you playing exactly the great Gatsby, drinking a champagne. When I see that review, I always see some scene from the movie. Oh, thank you so much, Bartosz. I'm going to take that as a compliment. That sounds amazing. Uh, they were all very young and thin. Oh, let's scroll up. Just Brendan says, they were all very young and thin. It's easier to retain your weight when you're under 20. <sighs> I guess that's true. But how would I know? I'm only 19. Um, fashionista and player, true about the models not eating. Some models might be naturally thin, but others just not so much. I remember Gigi Hadid on the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills being reprimi reprimanded for eating cake. Um... MK to Caleb, I agree. Some of their Métier d'art jackets are very close to haute couture craft craftsmanship. Brandon says, I'm drinking a margarita, lol. Cheers, sweetie. Cheers. Um, Jack, I remember watching Todd Oldham's 1995 Spring Summer Show online and the models were literally laughing on the runway. The 90s. Watch a Chanel show from the early 90s. All the models are watch walking, laughing on the runway, <laughs> looking at the people in the audience laughing with the photographers. It was Amazing. Amazing. Such a joie de vivre, you know what I mean? No, uh, so Lucas says, no, the one I caught on Instagram live was the black-haired, gothic-looking one with an angry face. Look number 22 on the show website, okay. Lucas says, didn't ask her about the show, but I asked her if it was less stressful to do recorded shows, and she answered that they do rehearsal of these shows, whereas a classic show is done one time. So, you know, they also rehearse for the other show. And actually, Chanel shows are always repeated. So they have for the main VIP special guests and special 
the boutiques and clients, they have their fashion show and then they run again a cheaper version of the fashion show a couple of hours later. Brandon says, it would have been cool to see a Tim Burton walking out in a skirt. Amazing. Jack says, uh, do you have any Alexander McQueen in the bunker? Very little, very little. Uh, Brandon says, looked like daughters of very rich people. So sad most people are starving right now. Yeah. Yeah, it just felt so out of place. So out of touch with the times. That's my issue here. That round table, so out of touch with it. It's like these rich, spoiled ladies from the highest, highest level of society. And most of them from movies and stuff. So in music, which is like another bubble on its own where people lose, lose completely touch with reality. What, they're talking to me about reality? Girl, no. 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 Just no. It's not acceptable at all. Diego, hey, is it too late to join the live? Hey, hey, Diego, welcome. No, no, you're just on time. Jack says, it's all about perfumes and scarves, darling. It kind of is. Lucas says, and I guess uh, he will certainly do a video about the Couture show too. Who? Poor hygiene? Was that shade? Asks Brendan to MK. No. It's not. A lot of them just, the poor hygiene is in. Uh, MK says, Jacob, our hypocritical attitude is linked to our ambivalent relationship with money. I envy North, America's, uh, North Americans for being so open with money, although too open sometimes. Lucas says, in English or subtitled, if I'm not mistaken. I have no clue what we're talking about. Uh... Debbie says, any show from the 90s, much more entertaining. Totally much more entertaining. Aisha says, guys, I'm back. Welcome back, Aisha. Oh, thank you for subscribing. I cannot pronounce the name, you guys. But thank you so much for subscribing. Um, Dolce Gabbana, Spring Summer 1995. Betsy Johnson, Spring Summer 1995 are great. Melly says, we just watched the Chanel show, you guys. <laughs> Jack Dean, the round table seemed like something from the Hunger Games dystopian. It felt really out of place. Uh, Mr. Philip Fabulous, yes, Jacob, you are spot on. So out of touch, very remote from uh, from reality. Uh, David says, can you imagine these shows being scented with the Chanel perfumes? Mm. You know, usually the people in the front rows, they get their goodie bags with the perfumes as gifts. Like the latest perfume is always gifted to them. Uh, yeah, so guys... Um, you're spot on, so out of touch, right? Okay, so we read all of them. We're done, you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. Cheers, sweetie. Thank you so much for co-reviewing. Um, let me let me sippy sippy as we play the outro. Mm. Thank you so much with co for co-reviewing the collection with me. It was amazing. It was fun times. And it was only fun because you were there with me. Because otherwise, what am I going to do? Monologue blabber on all by myself? Which is what I do, basically. So sad. But if I'm alone in the room, I'm like, oh, new fashion show. You best believe you can envision me in my room looking at and like yelling at the screen. Complete, like literally screaming. as How dare you make this? This is terrible. Be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> I'm literally that bad. I control myself on YouTube a bit more. But yeah. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, consider subscribing to my channel here on YouTube and also click the join button next to the subscription button and become a member today. Here on the side, look at this, amazing. We got our members. Thank you to all my members, tier one and tier two. You can also join me on Patreon and become a patron today. Super Jacob all spelled together on Patreon. Thank you also to my patrons also listed to the side. Thank you guys so much for supporting the Fashion Bunker. Without you, nothing would be possible. And also, thank you to all my wonderful super chatters because this is filmed live, you guys. This is a virtual live studio audience being filmed here. So Super Chats do kick in. And I would like to thank all my Super Chatters for helping with the donations for the Fashion Bunker. It really means the world to me. And it helps the conversation keep going because otherwise it wouldn't be possible. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Um, now, when it comes to Coco Chanel and the brand Chanel, these are two different worlds. Coco Chanel herself in the past was struggling with the brand that was kind of in part owned by the Vatheimers. So already during her life, in fact, she struggled with her own brand because of the perfumes and because of the styles and the fashions. So the fact that it's a complicated relationship also for me with the brand, because I'm aligned with Coco Chanel as well. But after all is said and done, I do believe that Virginie Via has 
Coco Chanel's best interest at heart. A lot of the pieces that she makes, as simple as they may appear to you today, because you're so used to seeing all of these over the top tacky things all over the place, doesn't mean that these clothes are any less worth the time to look at and to observe. They are very, very well curated in most part and dedicated to the heritage of Chanel, to Chanel's own history, to Chanel's DNA, Coco Chanel's DNA that she had in the 20s, 30s, and then when she brought it back in the 50s when she had her, made her huge return to fashion, 54, leading up until 1971 when she passed away. So um, bear that in mind. Bear the long heritage and tradition and history of this brand in mind when you judge an haute couture show by Chanel designed by Virginie Viard because some of the pieces that appear super simple and boring to you today actually are a delicate, very suave and delicate further development of what Coco Chanel was already doing in the 20s and 30s. And I find that very poetic, very, very, very gracious, very humble, very, very, very elegant, very Chanel, very Chanel. So guys, uh, you can follow me on my Chanel Instagram profiles. One is called Coco Chanel is in my house, all spelled together, dedicated to my private personal collection of Chanel pieces. And then you can have the, uh, you can follow me also on Coco Chanel Privé, all spelled together, dedicated to Coco Chanel's life. Uh, fan account dedicated to my love of Coco Chanel, the woman. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, never give up on love. Love you all. See you soon. Take care. Bye. Bye.